Welcome to yet another episode of Bobo and Mango and Donovan's Void. Without Mango, we're still sorting out our disputes yeah. with Mango. Yeah. Um, today's a really exciting episode. We're in the thick of spring, mm. as you can see. Um, I hope you guys can all hear the birds yeah. because we placed them here for you guys. Okay? <laughs> it's all a set. Today's a very special episode because we're doing a QA. Yeah. And I have asked you all to send me your questions. If you hear some kids screaming, those are some white colonizers on my land. <laughs> yes, that, that's the sound of colonization. <laughs> that is the sound of colonization. Yeah. There's five little white girls yeah. screaming. <laughs> After pillaging, yeah, this I land. do love that. All children are pure in that way, right? Yeah, because right. Because like, even with it's just like they're just playing jump rope. They're just yeah, having fun. And, and they have no like, idea yeah. they're playing jump rope yeah. on stolen land. Yeah, yeah. No, children do have a pureness to them. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. Today's episode is a Q and A, and you guys sent in some really good questions. They were juicy. They were spicy. They were personal. Yeah, yeah. They were very personal. <laughs> what an interesting audience. And I like audience. it. Yeah. I like uh, you guys. Yeah, for sure. We should hang out. For sure. We should fuck around and, like, yeah. do mushrooms together. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's going to be our open. tour. When yeah, we go yeah. on our world tour, Absolutely. we just bring mushrooms. Yeah. And we all just do ayahuasca. Yeah, we yeah. go into the forest. <laughs> Shaman. We do ayahuasca. And... And then we, like, leave society yeah, together. Yeah. yeah, you know, CNN will call it a cult. But listen, the connection <laughs> yeah. we had, no one can take you away from that. No the one? mainstream media cannot take that away from Never, you. never. I like this idea. Yeah. So um, let us know if you'd like us to go on tour. Absolutely. And start a cult together <laughs> where I'm the dictator. Anyway, today's questions. I have all of the questions in this hat. Mm. The hat I'm usually... This is my podcasting hat. I literally only wear it for podcasting. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> usually, I'm just a bald bitch. <laughs> just raggedy. Yeah. But I try for you guys. So, yeah, we have your questions. I have all of your questions in the magical podcasting hat. Mm -hmm. And um, we will pick one yeah. and then proceed from there. Yeah. Okay, should I pick? Yeah, yeah, get the sound. Yeah. It's a good one. It's a good one. Okay, let's go. Do humans need religion to survive? Oh my god. Oh, that's so interesting. What well, do you let's think? let's let's talk about what to survive means. Mm. Do humans need religion? I'm gonna hijack this question. <laughs> do humans need religion in order to not kill ourselves? Is religion a suicide prevention tool? Yeah. yeah. And if so, can we be mad at it? Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> What do you think? Well, you're someone who grew up yeah. very religious. Do you feel that you needed it? Uh, or do you feel that the people around you in that religious community needed it? Yeah. I think what's really interesting is mm. because obviously I come from that background yeah. and therefore I'm kind of a reaction to that. Mm. I do spend a lot of time shitting on religion and Christianity and like, you know, specifically what I grew up with. Mm. But it is interesting and worth noting in defense yeah. of them to look at the world without religion and mm. understand that like, okay, well you guys aren't really making some points either. You know, a oh. godless world kind of tends, you know, uh, consumerism replaces God like yeah. it has in the West, yeah. and, you know? That's kind of what a godless world where like capital runs everything or like mm. the state runs everything creates. And that's not particularly good either. And you see it in really the depression of Gen Z. You know, oh, interesting. Godless depression, you know? Yeah. It doesn't yeah. mean that you're not right, but it does kind of mean, like, the way that you view and think about the world is just making you personally miserable, you know? Like, you just don't feel good walking through the world as this kind of godless consumer trapped in this, like, birth, consume, die cycle where, like, nothing yeah. really matters. And then tradition is really something that I think people are, like, yearning for. And you can be happy without religion, but you almost can't be happy without tradition, you know? What do you mean by tradition? Um, like culture? Yeah. Do people just, need culture to survive? You know, like there has to be a reason why you guys are like all sitting around something and having a conversation and making time to gather, making time to like fellowship, which is what Christians mm. call it. You know, Christians kind of... Uh, completely monopolized fellowship in people's lives. What is, it's the, what is fellowship? Fellowship is the feeling of just meeting with like like-minded people and having a good time. 
you know? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. you know, it, yeah. so, but, like, when you look at religion and a hyper-capitalist world where we all work 40 hours a week, yeah. that's the only time we have for, like, fellowship. Oh, you know, just being with people that you agree with and having a good time and mm. serving a higher purpose or whatever. Yeah. So, like, I've noticed that, like, our trend towards godlessness has also just, like, eroded, like, fellowship from our society. Interesting. Now we're not really needing to convene to talk about anything bigger well, than ourselves. Well, can I counter that as mm. someone who grew up in a godless yeah, yeah. society and culture? Yeah. I grew up with no religion in my family. Yeah. And I actually find that it's the opposite. Mm. I find that it is religion that takes away sincere fellowship and replaces it with judgment. That's very true. I, so my family is a very like family-oriented family. Mm. And we're not like very religious, mm. but we really prioritize rituals. Mm. Like we're a very ritual-based family. Yeah. Um, every time it's someone's birthday, we go all out. Mm -hmm. Every time someone accomplishes anything, like literally anything. Yeah. Someone moves into another house or like mm -hmm. if someone got a job mm -hmm. or if someone had a baby if someone yeah. like it really someone graduated from high school any excuse you're describing any, South yes like any, any possible excuse. any possible reason <laughs> we will find to get together yeah and we're brought together by yeah. like music and the love of a good like time so, so is off parole yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah new york is yeah I yeah. yeah and i find that what religion does is it takes away that sincere mm. human Good desire yeah. to just connect for no reason at all. Yeah. To just connect for the sake of connecting, which inherently makes it sincere. Yeah. And instead replaces it with like, well, we're connecting for really high purpose. Mm -hmm. And therefore, like, you have to be correct. You have to come correct. And you have to come correct. And you have to... Because, mm -hmm. like, we're now all convening in the... In, in God's house, yeah. that's so much pressure for yeah. sincerity. Can like, I, you know, can, sin I, can sincerity and authenticity exist in, in a context where you have to impress a God mm -hmm. instead of just like, we're mm -hmm. just here for the sake of it? Yeah. yeah. I, my only disagreement is to the premise that you were born without religion. Your mm. being African is one of the most like thorough religions I've ever experienced. It is a religious ideology. Yeah. You don't notice it because it's so embedded into the fabric of African society. Mm. What it means to the way you relate to your family, the way you like relate and think about the world. Yeah. You almost don't realize it. It's not mm. defined on paper. But you made a good point about ritual. And here's how I know being African is a religion in the sense that mm. you like actively go out of your way to maintain rituals. Like yeah. things matter. You know, yeah. we all have to come to this person's birthday party. We all have yeah. to. Yeah, and we make very big deals yeah. out of out of the little mm. details of a ritual. Yeah, but that is what I right. think gives life meaning. And the, the thing is like Africans will always have that. They will always mm. have like a sincere appreciation of ritual. It could be from tribal traditions or even internal family traditions. Yeah. And the thing is that the modern world goes by so disorientingly quickly mm. to not be rooted in something that feels a little more ancient than oh, the constructs and paradigms of modernity will drive you a little insane. Mm. You don't have to be religious, you don't have to, but if you don't have something that grounds you in a world that is just moving this quickly. Mm. Like, if you think about, you know, living for the culture, yeah. you know, what does that mean? So one day it'll be in vogue to be this ideology, and the yeah. next day it'll be in vogue to be... You kind of can't be rooted in the day-to-day, -day, like, turnings of the world, because mm. you'll just not be a real person, you know? You won't yeah. be, like, grounded in something more real and more ancient. Mm. And I think a lot of kids, I've noticed a lot of kids are, like, going back into religion kind of hard. Like, How no one so? would notice this, but, like, there's mad Gen Z kids that are like, I'm going to be Catholic. Like, I'm really? going to be. And it's because they're looking for something ancient, you know? You watch mm. the world just spin so fast around you. Like, artists come and go like that. And you're just like, I'm yearning for something that's going to last more than two weeks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Isn't, I completely agree with you that mm -hmm. like humans need something ancient to ground themselves in reality. Mm -hmm. But what I find absurd about Western culture is that the ancient thing 
is a god that is larger than life mm -hmm. and someone you will never have access to, mm -hmm. someone you will never see, mm -hmm. as opposed to even your ancestors. Well, who that's... are di direct, it's, you know, like... Yeah. To prioritize something that is directly in you and directly impacts who you are and yeah. directly impacts how you move through the world and yeah. who you're being guided by. Yeah, yeah. That's so much more important than an invisible man in but the sky. But that is the religion. What is the religion? The idea that you view that as not a religion is just because why people determine they get to put the tags on what isn't isn't a religion. Mm. But Africans, even people that Africans that define themselves as atheists, they're like reverence and consideration and connection mm. they feel to their ancestors. Mm. That's a religious belief. It's and it's a belief that I now believe in. It's like a yeah. form of religion that I appreciate a lot more now. Understanding the like Ubuntu thing of just like I am because you are. Yeah. That is yeah. a that is a religious sentiment to me. Mm. That is like a spiritual sentiment. This leads into another question we got, mm. which was why did you guys move to South Africa? Oh yeah, that's, that's and the yeah, second yeah. part of that question was are you happier? I've been trying to organize my thoughts about moving here. Yeah. And I'm overwhelmed. Why? And why are you overwhelmed? Oh man, like <laughs> what is it about being in South Africa that has overwhelmed you? I think realizing that, like, your entire reality was just, like, fake, mm. you know? Um, How so? I think that you kind of got to get really far from, like, mainstream Western society these days to just feel like a real person. Wow, interesting. And um, yeah. that requires retreating into a place that really is still alive in that way. Mm. I personally love South Africa, but other people, I think, could find this in a lot of other places yeah. in the world. Yeah. I'm sure there are rural places in South America. There's yeah, really fine, or like but rural China. Yeah. Or like, yeah. I think that's, like, the biggest thing. It's just, like... And then you kind of got to rediscover who you really are mm. as a real person. Yeah. Because now you're in a place with other real people. Yeah. I say this a lot, but listen, niggas are bots. Niggas, yeah. <laughs> no, like in people, the West... It's just very programmed. You know, like, yeah. capital is such a easily programmable thing because mm. they can print more of it. Yeah. And, like, genuinely, people live for money in the yeah. West. You don't, I don't blame them. That's the whole game. It's yeah. the only thing you can live for there. But then you do just kind of become a puppet. You yeah. become like a machine. Do and I feel like I've been a machine my whole life. Oh, wow. And, and only like, now are you like, let me be a person. Absolutely, yeah. Do you think that black people can ever be just a human in America? Like, can you be black and live in America and experience just a shred of humanity? So, or is that... They'll never experience that there. The whole thing that America is rooted in, the yeah. U.S. dollar, yeah. the reason why it's still stronger than everyone else's dollar, yeah. is slavery. Yeah. Slavery was the conversion of people's lives into literal human capital. Yeah, yeah. And the economic and the whole trajectory of that decision still plays out today. I'm not trying to, like, shit on and saying, like, it's impossible to be happy as a black American in mm, America. Yeah. But what I will say is that you are the capital. Like, mm. your life, your whole thing, like, you are the cattle. And, like, you will never really be free From because that. your existence, you know? Yeah. I'm watching Kanye lose his mind right now, and mm. it's kind of, like, reconciling with that, where it's, like, I, my existence is not so much real as it was something to generate capital for white men. Yes. That was the premise of me being here. Yeah. That is the premise of where they allowed me to live. Yeah. That is the premise of what they allowed me to do. Mm. So uh, it's, it's very hard for a black person with a reasonable amount of intelligence yeah. to exist within the American system because you, you've clocked easily. That you're, way, ca you're just cattle. Right. Yeah. South Africa is very similar. Mm. That's the thing. I'm not trying to say that like this isn't a global problem. Oh, yeah. But in South Africa, you are that and you are also an African. Mm. And you are also a person with a family. Yeah. And you're someone with enough time to spend time with that family. Mm. And you know your whole life hasn't been drained from you yeah. to the point that you are not just a number on a spreadsheet. It's something you say quite often since coming to South Africa is that you say that like um, black women in America are always exhausted. Absolutely. You know, like just a constant exhaustion. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, it's because I feel like the American system just 
uses black women's bodies and like mm -hmm. sucks everything out of us, mm -hmm. you know? No, no, like in the most careless way. Mm -hmm. and Especially like, yeah. in America, like black women are the people upholding that society. Yeah. They're the teachers, they're the nurses, they're mm -hmm. the you know. Like fascism actually couldn't spread in America without like black women ceding to it in some way. Because mm -hmm. they are the people in the schools teaching it. You yeah. know what I mean? And um they certainly don't have, they don't give them anything to show for it. Yeah. Like, America is a place that does not treat its people with any dignity. It doesn't give them a dignified birth, mm. doesn't give them a dignified death, and it doesn't give them a dignified anything in between. Mm. You cannot, like, achieve dignity. Dignity is so much easier to achieve as a black person in Africa. Mm. Truly living a life where you can say, like, you own your house. Yeah. And you don't have a bunch of money in the world, but I just know that no one can kick me out of this place. Yeah. You have time to spend with your friends and your family. Yeah. Like, I literally just have time to see and spend time with my children. And yeah. see, and these are the things that give a life dignity. Yeah. America yeah. is the idea that capital will give you dignity. Yeah. And capital will never give most people dignity or else it wouldn't be capital. Yeah. Especially when that capital isn't even accessible to you. Right. You know? Yeah. Especially <laughs> when like... they redlined your homes. Yeah. They made sure your homes didn't appreciate in value. They didn't give you mortgages. that you mm. could pay. They didn't allow you to have any of the ingredients that would constitute for dignity. Yeah. Yeah. Africa did that, but but listen, it's propaganda. It's a, I I also realize how much I've been propagandized my entire life. Mm. Like I, the the content I relate most now is content made by Russians that have left Russia. Because really? as someone from America, I feel the exact same. It's like embarrassing. To it's be actually, an American. Yeah, it's it's embarrassing to have ever accepted that propaganda. Mm. And I get it because listen, it's a complete ecosphere. It's yeah. Americans don't know anything about the rest of the world. They yeah. know one language. They don't watch any outside news. They yeah. don't. They are in a cult. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't leave it. <laughs> so why why do people not? Why do Americans not realize that they're in a cult? Some do. Some do. But like, it's very difficult to leave. Why? What makes it just literally money? Yeah, well, the, yeah, that that's the they thing. They trap you with yeah. debt. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I feel for people there is all I'm saying. It's yeah. a very difficult... Here's the thing I relate most with about Russia, too. There's so many people shitting on Russians now. And it's like, why didn't you leave four years ago? Why are you just waiting until he's conscripting men to leave? Mm. And they're like, well, I couldn't afford it until now. Mm. I knew this was shit. You know, people pretend like Americans don't know this is awful. Oh, like, uh, we know. It's just like we don't know how to leave. We financially don't know how to leave. I have debt here. Yeah. I have, it's a, it's a jail. You know, it's a big jail. It is way. a jail. A place, like, based on debt as well. You mm. know? It's like, oh, but I got to pay this bill. And, you know, people talk to me about moving here and they're happy for me. But they're like, I couldn't do that. Yeah. I don't have a job that I could pick up and live anywhere. Yeah. I would love yeah. to go to Africa. I would love, mm. they don't have the ability to. Yeah. And I think that there are a lot of people that are like yearning for something more real. Yeah. And I hope that they can achieve it. But it is like very difficult to get out of that Do you think, meat grinder. Yeah, yeah. You know? Do you think that if like all the black Americans were to together just forget the debt, like <laughs> just be like, fuck it, I'm never, I'm leaving and I'm never coming back. Mm. <laughs> Does the debt matter if you commit to never coming back? So, you just really commit to, like, not living in a jail? Yeah. The thing that black Americans uh, need to, I don't know, start thinking about is um, the question of whether you want to be African. Because it is a mm. different thing. Yeah, and you're going to have to leave true. some of that things that you thought were characteristics of blackness mm. behind because there's a difference yeah you pointed out give this me an example one example of this person where it's like it was this black american woman who was dating this Ghanaian man yeah and his mother came over and she thought it was rude how much his mother was like moving things around and going through the cupboards and like cleaning things up yeah. and like yeah. how she didn't view her as like the woman of the house because mm. that's like a very black American thing yeah. where it's, it's like, like this is my house now yeah, yeah my name is on the deed yeah that <laughs> yeah. Era, like private yeah. property right yeah. uh, Christianity mm. like all of these things that you think are about blackness yeah that is not an African and an yeah. African 
paradigm, it doesn't matter whose deed is on the house. <laughs> yeah. This... What elder is in the home. Yeah. There's a yeah. general understanding yeah. of a chain of command of respect. Mm. Those are conflicts yeah. between black Americanness yeah. or even other diasporic blackness. Yeah, it's like existential constructs, yes. like that of private yeah. property. Right. Yeah. Or Christianity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Recent modern paradigms. Mm. So those are what the clashes would be about. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And you you see it when Africans have to deal with black Americans. Yeah. Or, well, someone actually asked another question, which is, um, do you think that the ways out, that Africans look at other black people outside of the diaspora with disdain is justified? Okay. And what do you think of that? Here's something that I tried to talk to about the Africans I meet here. Yeah. Because you guys have some problems as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> let's, no, let's beef. Let's, let's fight. Let's, let's fight. Let's have the Twitter diaspora. I don't know yeah. how this got. We're here now. Yeah. All right. Let's get to Twitter diaspora. Not wars. us doing diaspora wars on the podcast. Okay. Yeah. Here's something that is very important to remember. Yeah. Africans have fallen for a propaganda too. And it was a very intentional one. Mm. So after the American empire had exhausted their black American labor force, yeah. they needed to start pulling from the Caribbean. They also mm. needed to start pulling from Africa as well. And a part of that propaganda, intentional, traceable propaganda, yeah. was that all oh, these black Americans are just lazy. They don't want to work. You know, you guys are way more organized and we can deal with you. It, there's, you guys are better than the black Americans. Mm. The truth was really just that they had kind of beat them into the ground. They were a tired mm. labor force. When the labor movement started, they started asking for more rights. They do like the civil rights movement, those types of time. And the American empire started looking outward at other black people. African mm. people to come and sub, oh, you know subsidize I that. I mean, fill in that labor force. Yeah. And a part of that propaganda was like a lot of the diaspora wars we see today. Mm. A lot of the talking points of like, oh, Africans think they're better than us or oh, black Americans are just lazy were literal things that some guy in the CIA yeah. sat down and thought of. It was yeah. propaganda. Interesting. It was instilled. And although some of those things are true, they understand that the best way to keep people... The best way to keep power and maintain power is to keep people divided. Yeah, yeah. And to think that there isn't someone in a room trying to best find the way to keep us divided, mm. you'd be smoking crack. Yeah. Like, yeah. To, like that, to be American too is to realize that's how evil my country is. Well, do you, yes. That, that's something. Yeah. yeah, that's not even a question. Africans don't have to deal with the weight of that at all. Do you think the accusation mm. from Africans mm -hmm. towards Africans outside the diaspora mm. that they have no culture is justifiable or valid in any way? When Africans look mm -hmm. at black Americans and they say, these people, they have no culture. Yeah. Do you think that's true? Do you think it's a valid thing to say? You would hate me for asking yeah, this yeah, question, yeah. but this is what, yeah, yeah. you know, that yeah. question entails. Here's the thing. I get how you can look at it as that. Because, yeah. like, these are people that lost their culture. They mm. lost their languages. Yeah. They lost their traditions. Yeah. And they're all living for white man money now. Yes. But something that is yeah. very African that other all black people around the world need to, like, get together on is the idea of like look at what we do with so little and mm. that is something that when you look at the little that black americans were given yeah look at what they did with it mm. that is like a very african thing that we need to all connect on yeah you know we're suffering everywhere yeah and that is why we understand that life is suffering yeah and that yeah. is why like we have this magnificent ability mm. to create value from nothing yeah. It's kind yeah. of magic. Yeah. Even and though the whites always take it from us. We do it. We still yes, do it. And we yeah. keep doing it. And we you could put us anywhere. Yeah. And there's the match. And like that is just the only thing I think we should get on with. And then yeah. I think we should keep fighting. Because the fights are important. I think like mm. it is important for like South Africans to distinguish why they are not Nigerians. I think mm. it's we need to all be different. That's the biggest thing that they took from us. Yeah. The ability to be different. Yeah, and to be fight nuanced. And maintain yeah. our own cultures and think we're mm. better than people and compete. Like, it's the fact that we all have to all be on the same page about everything. Right. Yeah. Is the pro I want yeah. there to be more diaspora wars because I mm. want people to learn about who they really are. Mm. That's what black. You don't see white people being like, oh, we got to get all get along and yeah. sing Kumbaya. Like, yeah. no. They They're really, like, fuck the Democrats. Exactly. Fuck those niggas. Yeah. Why is it that we all have to get on about everything? Mm. That's the erasure. Yeah. That's the white supremacy. Yeah. That the idea that we all have to agree about everything. Yeah. 
no, that's absolutely. when they take away being individual human beings with dignity away from us. Mm. We should all be allowed to disagree with each other. Yeah. They've just all fucked us so much that we all need to agree about one thing, mm. which is our own liberation. Um, do you want to pick another question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, here's a good one. Yeah. Um, does critical thinking make you miserable? Let's discuss. Incredible question. Let us discuss. Absolutely. The answer is absolutely yes. And that is the end of the discussion. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. Um, that's the direction we're taking that argument. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Critical yeah. thinking. Who told us that we must be doing this every, every single day? Self-development. Critically think. Unpack. Get to the... Why? Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. is giving you the reward at the end of your tired yeah. life? Yeah. For critically think. No, suck some titties. Suck some titties. Yeah, yeah. Less no, critical sure. thinking. For sure. More no, ass eating. No, I feel you. Ass eating every day. Yeah. I feel like here's something that I've been thinking about, right? Yeah. Is we're the generation that has like done the most of this. Mm. Like we view ourselves as these things that constantly need to be excavated for meaning. Yeah. And that's why I'm constantly looking for a new ideology, a new political and economic belief system. Yeah. And a new Reiki. Just like I'm looking to be just yeah. actualized. Now. Yeah. And like how much do we really have to show for it? Yeah. We're <laughs> depressed fentanyl addicts with no homes, no friends. No communities, no love. You're doing the Dwight from the office thing? You have no friends you have no, and you have no land. Yeah, no, keep going. No, you're spitting right now. Keep going. You niggas have nothing. You have absolutely nothing yeah. to show for all of the critical thinking you've done. All you have is judgment. Now... People yeah. sit around pointing fingers at, he's less woke than her. Yeah. She's less woke. And it's like, and you still have no land. You still have no land. Yeah. You still have no family. You still have yeah. no community. You still have no friends. You still yeah. have no mental sanity. You still have no peace of mind. Mm -hmm. You still have no, not even beauty. Nothing. Yeah. How can we have nothing? Yeah. But this is why. I really just check out the conversations with niggas are like, well, I'm a Hegelian Marxist. Well, I'm an anarcho-syndicalist. Because it's like, my nigga, what do you do? <laughs> do you just grow fruits in your backyard and give it to people? Like, that's that's the thing. That's like the whole thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like, yeah. Constantly searching for meaning through the framework of like, just critical thinking. What do I think? It takes away from what you do. Yeah. What yes, do you do? Yeah, at a certain yeah. point of reading Marx, you got to leave your house. <laughs> yes. If, you, if at, a at a certain page, at right? At a certain if point. If you're still reading. Yeah. If you're still, <laughs> I think it's going to think I'm shitting on reading. No, but it's, no. <laughs> at a certain point in your anti-imperialist stance, oh. don't you have to leave the imperial court? I was like, don't you have to grow a tomato? <laughs> like at a certain level, after the fourth reread of Das Kapital. <laughs> Yeah. Do you not have to go outside yes. and just give someone a free vegetable? <laughs> like at a certain point of theory, oh my God, these niggas love talking, bro. These yeah. niggas just love talking about theory and I yeah. they would just sit on like Twitch and all day just talk about Niggas get paid to theory. sit on Twitch right. and talk about political And theory. at a certain point, does yeah. it not just matter where you live, what you do, where you give your money to yeah. and how you treat other people. Yeah. At a certain point, are we just getting in the weeds on this stuff? I guess not. I guess it doesn't really matter. I don't know. Yeah. But this is what I mean. Like people's like leftism or politics or whatever, it's really motivated by love of being right mm. and not like an actual genuine love for people and desire yeah. to see the world be a better place. Where do you think the obsession with critical thinking came from? And why us? Why are we the generation that thinks? Mm. so critically Interesting. when we could be the generation that represses mm. and especially because we see more and more that the more you critically think about a subject mm -hmm. the more you isolate yourself from those who don't think about that subject Absolutely. which is most people the more you develop yourself the further you alienate yourself from everyone else mm -hmm. who's like fuck developing myself in that mm -hmm. way we just get more and more divided mm -hmm. the more we think critically yeah so why do we keep doing and the more divided we get the more alienated we get the more yeah. alienated we are the more lonely we are and wh where 
What do we have to show for critical thinking? Yeah, and something I think so much about, which is my deep disdain for like the modern self-help industry, mm. which is kind of pitching people this belief system that like I am this thing with endless gems that needs to be excavated and I need to like delve mm. within myself to find the answers to all my life. Yeah. Every thing action that I do is relating to my childhood yeah. and I need to sit in therapy for the rest of my life yes. to finish and properly excavate this thing yeah as opposed to just like I am this wind chime that blows when the wind blows me like mm. I am just something here to benefit something bigger than myself yeah. yeah you know even if I am a mine should my life be digging through it endlessly mm. or should I give someone a sandwich yeah you know what I mean or should I do something yeah you get what yeah. I mean yeah so yeah I think going through a point of self reflection in life to figure out who you are work out some of your issues to like stop some of your toxic behaviors yeah. and thinking i think a really appropriate amount of therapy is necessary mm. or maybe it's consistently necessary no it's not <laughs> no <laughs> you don't need it <laughs> no that's my take that's I know, my take no. why every day two hundred dollars a session <laughs> why are you traumatized like how long are you going to be working on your traumas? The world is ending. Well, that's the thing. It is crumbling before our yeah. eyes and we're unpacking little traumas. Right. Nigga, the trauma of dying in yeah. a nuclear explosion yeah. Yeah. will be the thing to take you out, not the fact that you haven't unpacked your trauma. Right, right. And that's really the and thing. And this isn't me saying that we shouldn't unpack our traumas. Mm -hmm. I just think everyone gets one year of unpacking your trauma. And that's it. That's yeah. all you get. Yeah. And any more than that is now just being absurd. Yeah. Because if you didn't find it in a year, you're not going to mm -hmm. find it. Let's so go. your whole life is going to be unpacking. Yes. That's the vacation. Can't we just go on vacation? <laughs> yeah. So your whole life is just unpacking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Every That's, day. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing is like, listen, the world is kind of over. <laughs> yeah. It's just, who are you improving yourself for? For Donald Trump? Like, I just don't. Yeah, and that's that's what you answer your question about people in our age group. It's yeah. because we all of the major battles, mm. climate change, political ideology, race relations, were fought and lost before we were born. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like you were born, was it the year apartheid ended? Yeah. And you've watched this place not change. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. The, all these things the, were fought literally and when lost. Nelson was walking out, I yeah. was hopping out the womb. Absolutely, and nothing has changed since. Right. When people ask me what I think politically, I say that my first day of kindergarten was nine eleven. Yes. And <laughs> <laughs> my graduation of middle school was the onset of the 2008 financial crisis. Yeah. So it's like my yeah. life has just been kind of the tail end of this Yeah, thing. and then your half of your 20s was a global pandemic. And then, my yeah, my 20s was a global pandemic. Yeah. And then my mid-20s was a global recession caused <laughs> by feuding world powers. It's yeah. like, listen, that people say, like, I'm tired of unprecedented times. Yeah. But listen, my <laughs> whole life has been unprecedented times. <laughs> and it would be insane to, like... I forgot what the original question was, though. I'm sorry. Um, shit, I forgot too. Maybe let's do the last one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, was it, does critical thinking make yeah. you miserable? Which is, yeah, it mm -hmm. does. Guys, oh. be a worse person. <laughs> Wake up tomorrow <laughs> and be worse. No. <laughs> and, <laughs> and this is why I've decided to get worse. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. But like... <laughs> No, can I, can I, can, there's a truth to that. Because, yeah, no, there's a yeah, truth to that. Yeah, yeah, give Here's up a little. Is that, listen, I'm a chimp. That's yeah. my new thing. That's yeah. my new ideology. <laughs> yeah. Is, listen, I'm a chimp that stood up and got a little mouthy. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I don't really think yeah. <laughs> that I'm some, like, big in person thing. And as far as, like, critically thinking, I look at Mango. And I yeah. just look at how simple her life is. No, Mango. And how she doesn't mull over her childhood. Yes. She doesn't, like, sit there. And at the end of the day, we need to get back to that. The frontal cortex, yeah. might, the prefrontal cortex, might have been the greatest mistake. Like, actual Ever. consciousness no, it was. might have been the greatest mistake of the evolution of life on this planet. Yeah. And maybe yeah. we need to get back to just being chimps. Yeah. And that, there's a truth to that. Get a lobotomy. <laughs> You have to get it. You have yeah. to get a lobotomy. Yeah, but intelligence only leads to mental illness. That being said, we are chimps, yeah. right? So all of this critical, oh, I'm a Hegelian. We need to stop with that. We got to yeah. cut that out. Yeah. At the same time, we're social chimps. 
Mm. So you still have to be good to other people. Yes. We're people yeah. that are meant and designed to live in the societies where we take care of each other. Mm. People think that critical thinking is a way to take care of each other better. Yeah. It's not. Yes. Leaving yeah. your house and doing something good for another person as a little chimp that's not supposed to be talking about these complicated things. Mm. That's what you're here to do. That's you know, how you'll find happiness. Everything you're saying right now sort of reminds me of the initial question I asked, which is like, when did we start thinking? And I actually blame architecture. For why we started thinking. Yeah, Explain. for why we started thinking so deeply. Mm. I think that our environments mm. influence what we think about. Mm. And it influences who we are, how we move through space, how we view ourselves, how we view other people, what we view ourselves as in relation to ourselves and the world at large, the planet at large and society and our community. Mm. That's all shaped by your external environment, mm. the room you wake up in. The, the sound design of mm -hmm. your life. What do you hear in the morning? Do you hear birds or mm -hmm. do you hear the drilling mm -hmm. next to the A train? Mm -hmm. the, the color, the amount of color that you see, mm -hmm. the tactile experience, mm -hmm. like are you able to walk on grass? Mm -hmm. That all defines how you view yourself. And this is also like why we intentionally have these backdrops in this podcast mm. because this mm. is my form of propaganda absolutely as a dictator <laughs> i said yeah yeah if i need these niggas to be collectivist in my cult yeah i have to give this this is the environment that would best yeah. facilitate collectivism as an ideology yeah and that's why it's here and so when architecture was mm. erected and that pun is intentional mm. because architecture in the Western world is so phallic. Mm -hmm. And when it was erected, mm. it shaped our thinking towards this patriarchal, because it's so phallic, mm -hmm. um, domineering white supremacist, because it's all about towering over each other mm -hmm. as opposed to walking amongst each other. Mm -hmm. It shaped the way we view ourselves. Mm. When Western architecture took nature away from us, it also stripped us of the ability to know that we're just earth plumbers. Like our mm. purpose here on this planet is to take care of the earth. But when you live in a concrete jungle <laughs> and you never <laughs> see the earth, Very how true. would you know that you're here to serve it? Right. So we never do. So we eat red meat mm. and we fucking kill animals unnecessarily mm -hmm. and we treat each other like shit mm -hmm. and we don't give a fuck about the, the fuck the emissions and mm. just the way that we treat our planet is because we never interact with her we never engage her we mm. never are even living in her yeah. and that shaped who we are as a society yeah so you were saying we're chimps no and here's the thing nature the idea of nature is mm. the problem because that separates us from it yeah <laughs> yeah know? yeah that's the it's that way of thinking yeah we are this separate species on top of nature with mm. dominion over nature that mm. that's the whole problem yeah the second that we start thinking like that yeah it leads to the end yeah like human society and our consciousness is a snake that eats its own tail at yeah. that level yes right we no, cannot separate does. ourselves cognitively from yeah. the land yeah a lot of indigenous people didn't yet right yeah well like, i also think that when you spend so much time in the land mm. you inherently spend more time thinking about it absolutely and when you spend time absolutely. outside of the land you inherently start thinking about stupid shit like am i a democrat or am i absolutely. a conservative absolutely. who is fiscally yeah. you know it's a man just back to south africa man living in a small town that is yeah. very naturey mm. where your problems matter when I yeah. was in New York, my problems were like, oh man, it's like, you, do you abolish the police or like defund the police? And like, yeah. yeah. And here it's like, there are people from the townships that are pooing in the ocean. <laughs> yes. And that is a real problem that I care about. And that you like, can do something about. Yeah, that I, yeah. I feel like I can go out and I can do something. Yeah. Or it's like, there are just people that don't have houses. Mm. That is something that like to care about. Yeah. If there's anything yeah. to like care about. Mm. Or like there's an environmental emergency. Like there yeah. was an oil spill at the beach by us. Mm. I care about that. Yeah. I care that the plants died and someone came and they rehabilitated. And that was an issue yeah. in that yeah. community. Yeah. That's how we need to think about things. Yeah. But the second you start doing big society. Yeah. You know, we start thinking too big. Yeah. Now we're thinking about be meaning. Mm. Oh. 
The second humans became this thing that wanted anything more than like a little house yeah. and some food yeah. and some like meaning in the stars. Yeah. That's where we kind of lost the plot. Mm. Yeah, because we were then, doing too much. Yeah, you create this idea of like a nation state yeah. and then that nation state and then this person invades and, and it's then, convoluted yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and it sucks it's boring yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. and like we're dancing on like apps you know yeah. like you know like it just doesn't really lead no, d- this is mm. why my cult <laughs> we're gonna do a drinking game yeah yeah every where time where every up. time I bring up being a dictator you have to take a shot yeah or a mushroom <laughs> one of the two <laughs> take a shot or a handful of mushrooms <laughs> every time I talk about being a dictator. <laughs> That's an insane request. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'll say so back to your dictatorship. Um, no, that my dictator will be no more mm. than 500 people. You mm. can It's also why social media is so unethical. The mm. fact that we have to consider the opinions of more than 500 people mm. and the gaze and the perception and the expectations and the ju- our little chimp brains cannot handle that. Mm-hmm. We can't. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, the mm. max amount of like social thinking and Mm. social distance Mm -hmm. is 500 people we can only worry about the problems of the 500 people in front of us Mm -hmm. it's also what i talk about with you know one of the questions we got was is it ethical to eat meat Mm. like in any Mm -hmm. context and i'm just at this point where like thinking about ethics on that level is Mm -hmm. just i'm just done with it Mm -hmm. it just feels foolish at this point because it's like I'm thinking way too far outside mm. of my chimp mm-hmm. brain. I can mm. my brain can only handle like yeah. 500 people. Absolutely. And if all of us were handling the 500 people in our communities, mm-hmm. we don't we'd handle the world. Absolutely. But because I'm trying to handle the people Absolutely. in Indonesia, and they're trying to handle the people yeah, yeah. in Kiev, yeah. and the, no, yeah. no, this this is the circle. Yeah. Of our 500 people, yeah. and we focus on us, and those other 500 must do the same. Yeah. And then all 8 billion of us, yeah. because we were focused, mm-hmm. are now taken care of. Absolutely. You know what's insane? We're tiny little chimps mm. meant to process the opinion of like 35 to 50 people. Mm. And now we're trying to wrap our heads around NATO. Can you and it's imagine? Like, Listen, no. guys, let's <laughs> take. There should be no name. We shouldn't no. be so like it's six different, and then all these countries come, and then there's a board. And then, listen, listen, no, it's, it's thirty-five to fifty people, or I lose my mind. Exactly. And listen, you look at society, and everyone's lost their mind because they're mean, trying yeah. to think about bigger concepts, and yeah. they can truly wrap their head around. Stop thinking listen. about meaning. Yeah. Just L- yeah. get your ass ate today. Get a mango. Yeah. Get a mango. Yeah. Yeah. Get that blunt. Mm. Yeah. Get your sit under a tree. Yeah, yeah. Get your ass ate, mm. and then like worry about whether the herbs in the garden are growing. Yeah. You know, like worry about that. Yeah. Worry about like are the squirrels okay in Absolutely. the forest? Absolutely. Because the last one I saw was looking kind of sick. Absolutely. I, I need to take up. Yes. Yeah. A query yeah. with the board of tourists, with the yeah. board of squirrels. Yeah. You know, like. Those are the problem. Mm-hmm. Worrying about like climate change yeah. and then worrying about like the ethical consequences of my day to day actions. Is it mm-hmm. ethical to buy a tomato? Absolutely. And is it ethical? Nigga, you need to worry about your cousin who does not have a place to stay today. Absolutely. That's who you need to worry because he's yeah. outside at the door. Yeah. The squirrels in Yemen, yeah. they're too far for you. They're Absolutely. too far for you to worry about. Worry about your cousin. Worry, he's on Skid Row. Worry about your look at worry about your man. Yeah, yeah. That's that's been, where I'm at. Here's where I'm trying thinking. to get yeah. at a point in my life and development. Anytime I start getting really into the ramifications of the expansion of NATO, mm. I just go outside and I put my feet in the ground. Yes. I put them in the ground and I rub my toes in the ground a little yes, bit. Yeah. And then I go, stop being silly. Yeah. And just go go do, do, do something real. Yeah. Go build like a chair and yeah. give it to someone. Yeah. Go go give someone a meal. You know, go Honestly. clean up the beaches. As a second, I start worrying about whether the collapse of the Soviet Union <laughs> is what prompted. I just you gotta I just put your feet. Yeah, you know, no. and just yeah, just do some real. Yeah, you, you know? have to. You Listen, have we're to. here for a very short amount of time. Absolutely, very little that we can do will affect the outcomes of most of these things. Yeah, and the only thing that would would be just doing something positive. With yeah, your time. yeah. So just find something positive to do with your time. 
And that's what social media really killed. Yes. Because now we're all yeah. on this thing arguing about this arbitration that yeah. we can't affect anyway. And now you have climate anxiety. <laughs> Why were you ever anxious about the climate? Nigga, focus on your garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your herbs are failing. Your herbs are failing, failing. And everyone needs to focus on their garden because all of our gardens are the climate. Yeah, yeah. You and know? that's all you're going to have. And that's all you're going to have it's anyway. Also, and also, don't, don't distract yourself with stupid shit. Yeah. Like, don't yeah. be one of those people who, like, now my whole personality is Marvel movies. Yes. Like, that's too, like, just Don't just do something, but, like, do something important mm. that you know you can waste your silly little time with yeah but is also positive and yeah. you can also maybe help someone else you know what i mean like that's yeah. we really cannot be thinking about nato i'm no, sorry we can't listen no. it's a problem but i'm i'm done chiming in on it no we're not doing it no yeah go outside and do some edibles and right. there we have it guys yeah yeah uh we've reached the end of our episode i think that's a good note to end okay, on okay cool um, there were so many other questions that maybe we'll do yeah, part yeah, we'll, two. Yeah, we'll do another part. Yeah. There's just a little ant crawling on you. Mm. Um, we'll do part two next time. Mm -hmm. So we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.